Welcome to the Assessive Procedure Training Presentation. I'm Michelle Schwingus, the Professional Education Manager for HALT Medical. Let's begin by introducing Assessive G. Assessive G is the Assessive Guidance System. Guidance enhances the original Assessive System by providing a virtual trajectory of the handpiece in order to reach the fibroid target. The procedure components include the standard laparoscopy setup, laparoscopic ultrasound, and the addition of the Assessive G system. The Assessive procedure is appropriate for any patient that has one or more symptomatic uterine myomas and are candidates for laparoscopic surgery. Assessive G uses electromagnetic tracking technology never before used in the field of gynecology. The Assessive guidance system utilizes special sensor coils within the laparoscopic ultrasound sleeve and the Assessive G handpiece that then pass through a magnetic field generated over the patient's body. These sensors establish a location relationship that is then translated into avatars on the screen. The software draws a virtual representation of the ultrasound transducer and assess a handpiece in order for a surgeon to predict its trajectory in relation to the ultrasound plane. This technology enhances the surgeon's ease, speed, and precision of handpiece placement into the uterine serosa. Fibroid targeting with Assessive G. First, you identify the target fibroid to treat and hold the laparoscopic ultrasound steady once the midline or widest part of the fibroid is found. Move the tip of the Assessive handpiece closer to the uterus using the laparoscopic view. Using the laparoscopic view allows the surgeon to orient themselves in the abdomen and the uterine serosa and increases patient safety. Slowly sweep the handpiece tip laterally to intersect the plane of the ultrasound. The proximity meter in the center of the screen will help guide you. If it reads blue, you are in front of the plane. If it is reading yellow, you are behind the plane. Once the plane is intersected, the green bar will illuminate in the center. When the ultrasound plane is intersected, the purple guidance pathway, also known as a purple paperclip, will appear. This indicates the current trajectory of the Assessive G handpiece. Again, remember to hold the laparoscopic ultrasound steady to maintain the location of the fibroid on the screen. To center the trajectory over the fibroid target, sweep the guidance handpiece towards or away from the laparoscopic ultrasound. With the fibroid target steady and the purple paper clip centered over the target, slowly advance the handpiece tip towards the uterine serosa. Continue advancing the handpiece tip using rotational movements through the uterine serosa while continuing to monitor your advancement using your laparoscopic guidance and ultrasound screens until the fibroid target is entered. Helpful hints. When possible, Keep the handpiece parallel and in plane to the ultrasound transducer to visualize the electrode array once deployed. Always maintain a firm downward pressure while deploying. If not enough counter pressure is applied while deploying, the handpiece may push back and the electrodes will not deploy correctly. Additionally, the center electrode may bend or kink. In the event of a dense myoma, your initial deployment may be less than desired. This is okay. Deploy until you feel resistance, ablate, Retract and redeploy. The initial ablation will cause the myoma tissue to soften and allow further deployment. Repeat until desired deployment is achieved. Do not force deployment. This can cause damage to the electrodes. Instead, retract fully, apply pressure, and redeploy. Remember to only apply pressure when deploying and never while retracting the array. After treatment, please inspect electrode array to identify any bent tips or array irregularities. Things to avoid. Do not reposition the handpiece once the array has been deployed. Stop, retract, reposition, and redeploy. Do not advance the handpiece once the array has been deployed. Retract fully, then advance the handpiece and redeploy. Do not deploy if excessive force is encountered and do not use any rotational movement once the array is deployed. If you encounter abnormal resistance when attempting to retract the array, do not force retraction. Instead, slowly withdraw the handpiece with the array still deployed 
and inspect the array for bent electrodes that may have prevented retraction of the array back into the handpiece. Always, post-deployment and pre-ablation, view the deployed array in all three planes. We want to ensure that all electrodes are deployed as intended, meaning no closer than one centimeter from the fibroid capsule and completely within the fibroid, as well as within the uterine serosa. Confirm with the ultrasound image as well as laparoscopic view to ensure that all of the electrodes are within the fibroid capsule and not protruding through the serosa. Please see the full IFU for additional safety guidelines. Ablation volume characteristics. Treatment of each individual fibroid will depend on each fibroid's size and shape. To ensure optimal outcomes from the ASSA procedure, we need to keep two main objectives in mind, complete and thorough treatment of the fibroid and patient safety. The treatment goal is to treat as close to 100% of the fibroid as possible, treating at a minimum 80% of the fibroid volume. Consider the following. The ablation shape is pear or egg-shaped and not perfectly round. Treat each fibroid according to shape and consider your treatment plan from a volumetric perspective. To treat as close to 100% of the fibroid, use the pear shape of the ablation zone to your advantage. Use multiple overlapping ablations as necessary and treat along the longest axis if possible. You cannot over ablate the tissue, so multiple overlapping ablations of the same fibroid to maximize your ablation volume is preferred. Consider this elliptical shaped fibroid. If a surgeon was to enter the center, ablate once, and move to the next fibroid, they would have treated less than 50% of the total fibroid volume. Here are additional treatment options that would enhance the treatment of this fibroid. All include multiple overlapping ablations. Again, treatment goal is to treat greater than 80% of the total fibroid volume. Steps for safety. Safety considerations with the Assessa procedure. Avoid the use of excessive force with the Assessa handpiece. Utilizing laparoscopic and ultrasound views, always know the location of the handpiece tip at all times. Confirm the handpiece tip via ultrasound by identifying the tip's bevel. If over-deployment occurs with the electrodes, retract to the desired deployment and reconfirm placement via ultrasound and laparoscopic view in all three planes. Avoid directing the assessor handpiece laterally towards vital structures, such as the pelvic sidewall, bladder, or bowel. Again, always confirm that the electrode needles are fully retracted before repositioning, advancing, or withdrawing the handpiece. To avoid damage to needles while deploying, maintain stability of the uterus. Just a reminder of correct versus incorrect placement of the handpiece. The top left imagery shows correct handpiece and electrode placement in various myomas. The bottom left shows incorrect placement. The first image depicts what could happen when inadequate pressure is not maintained while deploying, also known as pushback of the handpiece. Both of the other images show examples of electrodes protruding outside the capsule of the fibroid, which would be verified by ultrasound scanning. The third image on the right again show correct and incorrect placement in both the fibroid and uterine serosa, verified by both ultrasound and laparoscopic views. Postoperative course. Routine and standard laparoscopy care and instructions can be followed, including post-laparoscopy follow-up. Pelvic rest is recommended for three weeks post-procedure. Additionally, instrumentation of the uterine cavity should be performed with caution and only when absolutely necessary. Consider post-op ultrasound scanning at 3, 6, and 12 months to observe changes in fibroid size. Some changes that patients may observe post-op are increase in dysmenorrhea with first menses post-procedure, vaginal bleeding from the tenaculum site in the first 24 hours and spotting for the first few days, low-grade temperature elevation for the first couple of days, vaginal discharge for up to six weeks, uterine discomfort and or cramping for the first few days post-procedure, GI changes due to the general anesthesia as well as incisional pain, shoulder pain, headache, and fatigue. Final notes. In regard to ASSA and the treatment of myosarcoma, ASSA is not indicated to treat cancerous tumors. 
Tissue excision and morselation is not required with the Assessa procedure, and as Assessa uses COAG while withdrawing the handpiece, seeding of viable tissue is unlikely. In regards to patients who are desiring future fertility, Assessa is not currently recommended for patients who wish to become pregnant in the future. There are studies currently ongoing to establish safety of pregnancy in patients who have had the Assessa procedure. However, presently, fertility is an off-label usage of Assessa. Please contact your local assessor representative with any additional questions. Thank you for your time.